Right, what I'm going to do today uh, is just a, a quick Photoshop tutorial. Um, as you can see here, I've got a few sketches here, which are just borrow sketches. So I'm going to chuck those into Photoshop. Um, I've just downloaded a trial version of Photoshop CC. Um, so let's go back to here. Yeah, continue trial. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck one of these in. I'm going to show you the process of how to get something like that from just a sketch. And uh, it's more just a technique. So I'm not going to do a for and I'm just going to show you how to do. So try and keep it nice and short and quick. Um, right, so if I want to just drag that into Photoshop. And then what I'm going to do... Um, that is whatever the image size is, which is actually pretty small. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to starters rotate that counterclockwise. And as you can see, this is literally off uh, my phone because someone decided to steal my computer. So that's why there's been no videos for the past two months. So, um, right. So, if I was to, um, obviously it's quite grainy all that, and it's quite pixelated and well, just horrible in general. So, I'll do a Command N, gives you a new, or you can just go File. But I use shortcuts for almost everything. Like all these are shortcuts. Um, if you're on a PC, it's Control N for new. Um, mainly just because I'm lazy and I like things done quicker. Firstly, I'll select on an international paper from just doing renderings. And I generally like to do A3. And I, for my personal stuff, I do 300 dpi. Um, just so it's a really high resolution. And what it'll do for every square inch on an A3 sheet, it'll do um, 300 pixels by 300 pixels for every inch. That's what that means, basically. Uh, standard is probably about 150 to do renderings but I like to keep it nice and high just so that when you do shut lines instead of having to use a one pixel line you use more like a five pixel line to do a shut line so it's just really crisp and nice lines otherwise it just gets a bit well math um, I normally keep it an 8-bit eight, eight um, so you can choose to do whatever you want um, and I usually do square pixels. So that's just how we get a new sheet. So the next one, it'll open up in a new tab. If you, now, if you want to, you could have done this in the settings. So if, if I'd swap those, so you can see the resolution of that. Um, if I just swap those around, it would have given me a landscape. But um, if you haven't done that, then go to image rotation and then just go. 90 degree clockwise. So you can see here, I've got two tabs here. And I'll just quickly go over the user interface. Um, this is the move tool, which as you can see highlighted, it says V in brackets, so that's your hotkey. So if you press V, you so if you press V, that's the move tool. Uh, the mask tool is M. Uh, I don't use the lasso tool at all. Um, I don't use this. Uh, I occasionally use the magic wand. Um, this is the crop tool, so you can crop something. So, for example, you can just crop something, but um, I rarely use that. Don't say, mm. uh, the eyedropper, so you can pick colour up from the background. So, this is I on the keyboard, I believe. Yep. So if you press I at any point on the keyboard, um, and you see this little wheel, and you can see that the top ring that's changing colour is the colour that you're picking up. So you can pick up a colour in your renderings and stuff like that. Um, I generally, I don't. I occasionally use a ruler tool if I'm doing a package drawing, um, but other than that, uh, healing brush. This is kind of used in. Um, photography more than anything else, editing photographs and graphic design, but 
for the purposes of rendering cars and industrial design, I don't use it. Um, brush tool is obviously the brush, which is um, all your standard brushes that come in Photoshop. Uh, clone stamp, I, again, I, I don't use that. Um, things I do use are the eraser for obvious reasons. The gradient tool is quite good. And the paint bucket tool is basic stuff. Blur, I occasionally use that. Um, dodge and burn, I use quite a lot. Uh, dodge makes things lighter, and then burn makes things darker. I'll demonstrate that in a bit. Pen tool, really important. I use pen tool all the time. So that's creating a pen. This is how you modify a pen, and this is add and then free form. Um, now at the minute I'm using a mouse, I haven't got my Wacom yet, so I'm waiting for my Wacom to be delivered. So I'm doing this with a mouse, believe it or not. Uh, text tool, path selection, direct selection tool here. This is all related, as you can see, these are all within this little line here. They're all path related stuff. The shape one here, you get a series of shapes. Now, if, say if you want to do a rectangle box, it will give you an option of a shape that's filled with pixels, path or shape itself. Now, when you're on shape, you can uh, choose a colour. So, I can, OK, well, I want that to be red. And then you can say, I want to stroke the edge. Which, when it says stroke, that means basically draw a line all around the perimeter of whatever you've got. So, you select a colour and then three points. is Because it's quite high res, that is three points. So, if you up that to something a bit more visible, you see what it does there. You can do gradients. So, if you select a gradient, for example, any one of these, all works in the same way. But this one's going grey to white. That's grey to nothing, transparency. So, here, if you click on these top ones here, it says opacity, so you can raise that to 100 and you'll notice it goes up, or you can go back down to zero. Um, if you want to change the colours, you change the bottom ones and it'll let you pick a colour. And then you can add more points, so you can make a combination of various colours, etc. etc. Now this is really good for doing um, quite a lot of things actually. Um, but anyway, so that's what that's when it's on shape mode anyway. But um, I'm just going to undo all that. If you do it on pixels, it'll just do a square, no options. Um, if you do path, it'll create a line. Nothing you won't see anything happen, but if you go over to the right hand side now, my setup I've got layers, paths, and properties. Properties is quite interesting with um the uh, rads. You can add radius to a square, see that by just clicking and dragging and uniformly adding. So this is quite good for doing stuff. Um, so that's properties of paths, which is why I've got that there. Um, now work path, every time you do a new path um, it will create or overwrite the current work path. Now, so currently that's got that path there, so if you want to save that path double click and name it something because because otherwise you will overwrite your paths so you see it comes up with the work path again. So um, paths, save them if you want them saved. You can do multiples on that same layer whilst that layer is activated in your paths. But if you unselect that so it's not blue, you unselect that and then you do another one, it will overwrite what has not been saved. So if it says work path, that means it hasn't been saved. Uh, So when it comes to 
process of starting this, um, this is where I want my rendering to go on. So if I just drag this out of here, so they're on separate screens and not on the same tab. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Where's my other one gone? Right. You can flick between files that are open by pressing um, Control and Tab. Now, whilst in this one, for example, if you go in your layer and you drag that layer to here, it will then move that file pixel for pixel. Now, I don't want this now, so I can get rid of that. Don't save. And I'm just going to put that back up there. You see that it goes blue, you can just drag and drop and it will back here. Um, <coughs> now you'll notice it appears on a new layer. The background layer is always locked, um, but if you really want to, you can delete that and then just create a new one. And um, which is, well, it's up to you. Uh, if you've got a grid like that, that means it's transparent, so there's no pixels there. Um, so if I were to save this now as a PNG or a TIFF file, all this area will be um, empty and blank. So if you were to put it into like um, video editing or Illustrator or After Effects or something, you'll you'll just have transparency. Um, but that's that's an all that's. You can spend it just talking about that. Anyway, so what I want to do now is I want to clean up the actual sketch because obviously it's not a very good image. And eventually the intention is to either, depending on what you want to go for in terms of style, you can either remove the sketch completely when the rendering is done or you can have the, the sketch on top or something to make it look sketchy or something. So it's always important to clean up all these uh, nasty pixels. Now the best way that I find to do it is, um, a lot of people I know over the years have messed around with the Magic Wand tool, which is W on the keyboard, and then, which is this little tool here. And if you do that, you'll notice, uh, actually, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. You have to be in the right layer in the first place. You'll notice it'll pick up all this. Now that that's fine as it is, and you can keep if you hold shift and keep clicking, it will pick up all the stuff that's of a similar range and colour. <coughs> now the tolerance, if you increase the tolerance, it'll pick um more colours within a certain range. The lower the number, it will literally pick one colour, so and you'll notice how, how small that's picked up that as a tolerance of 1. Now if I do a tolerance of 10, you'll notice it picks up a bit more because it's picking up a range of colours, not so much just one pixel. Can you see how many different colours are in there? So if you were to pick up, say, 100% of that, it will pick up absolutely everything that's white or grey. Because that's kind of that's the color palette that I uh, selected with the one tool, um, but I don't find that does a particularly good job normally. So what I tend to do is if I press Command L, this brings up the levels, which is also accessed by a mode adjustments, and it's in levels. So just to show you that again, I go image. Adjustments, Levels, Command L. It'd be Control L on a PC, um, if you're unfortunate enough to use a PC. Um, now what you can do is, for some reason that's not got anything on it. Oh, that's weird. Well, okay. Normally with that, anyway, when it wants to work, is you'll have a, a graph on here, and you can 
adjust the level of the black to white and the grey contrast and whatnot. Um, you could do brightness and contrast. Uh, okay, well clearly that's why it's not working. If I just save that onto my desktop. I'll try that again because that's clearly doesn't want to work. Um. <coughs> yeah, continue trial. Right, sorry about that. Right, okay. Um. So if I do levels, yeah, that's what it should look like. <laughs> Good old Photoshop. All right, if I move the gray slider you'll notice the difference where everything is becoming whiter apart from the black lines. If I move the white slider, it just gets whiter and whiter and whiter and whiter. But then you'll notice this is all getting washed out. Um, so then you can kind of pull this back up, but then you get this weird exposed sort of effect. And then you obviously lose all the cross hatching, depending on your line weight as well. Because as you can see here, this is like a really strong line and these are quite faint lines. So it's kind of a, a balancing act to do that. But then it kind of helps to reduce the noise. Or you could go colour range. <coughs> now, this part says fuzziness. Um, the higher the number, the more it will pick up. Now, if I were to pick up the um, the background and click OK, same similar sort of effect as the what magic wand, but I just find it's more precise. I'm going to duplicate that later as well, just so I don't. I've got the original. Uh, the eyes turn things off, so it's like display turned off. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press delete and see what that does. But you'll notice. It's it's not really. I want to keep all these grey lines, these pen work pen lines, and it's only picking up what's got a dotted line around it. So that's no good to me that at all. So deselect that by pressing Command D or Control D. I do color range again. This time I'm going to try image, and I'm going to pick the black, and then I'm going to set it to probably about a hundred, and see what that does. Again, let's do it in the black. So this is kind of a trial and error. Um, I'm going to go to selection. Uh, I'm going to pick that sort of colour. And that seems to be a bit better. Now I'm going to invert that path because I've selected the black. So I don't want to delete the black. So what I want to do, I want to go select, and then I want to go in. Oh no, it's not that. Edit. Where is it? Hmm. No, I just do Command I, and it's not actually inverse. It's something else. If you press Command I. Oh, sorry, yeah, it is that one. You want to go inverse, and then what that will do, it will select outside the uh, selected area. So if I press delete now, it will delete that, leave me with that. But then I have, it. I have actually inversed all that. So I'm just going to invert that. Go to that again because you notice all the black went quite grey. So that's left me with literally just the sketch. So if I were to just paint bucket fill the background with a white, so I'm going to select a white. So there is a little bit of noise, but it's not too bad. I mean, most of it is pretty clean. 
Um, so yeah, that's the way I generally clean up a, a non scanned or even a scanned uh, sketch. If I was to do it, even even do that. Generally, I try to do everything digitally these days. So, um, and another good thing is if you want to get rid of certain aspects of anything, I'll show you layer masks on this for the sake of showing you what layer masks are. Um, this little icon in the bottom is called a layer mask. And it applies to whatever highlighted layer you've got. So I'm just going to click on there. And then you'll see this little box added to there. And then get a brush. And the way that layer masks work, they work in black or white value. <coughs> so. Well, let me just increase my brush size. When it wants to work. Okay, it doesn't want to work. I'll do the old fashioned way. If you right click, you get your brush options. Now, if I use a black colour while selected on this, you see it's got selection around it. If I paint black on here, it'll make um, it'll make that ledge disappear. Um, if I paint white on the mask, it'll appear, but it doesn't actually affect the layer itself so you can uh, you can delete parts of an image without actually deleting it um, which is quite handy so if you're working with a photograph or something and you want to um, retrieve something that you've covered up before layer masks are a great way of doing that so it will hide all this if you want to do it manually with a brush um, I wouldn't normally do this on actual sketch, it's just to show you layer masks. So I can remove all this that I don't want. And obviously you can get it done with a really small brush and go around and make it nice and neat. And like I say, I'm doing this with a mouse. So not to be advised, get a whack on. If you can afford one, get a whack on. Uh, okay, so that... I've got something to start with now. I've got a layer that I can actually start rendering on top of. So what I'm going to do, because that's not positioned or scaled particularly nicely, so I'm going to move that around. Now if I press V, you get uh, or click up here for the Move tool, I can now move this layer around because I'm on this layer and I can just move that around. Um, I can also do Command or Control T and it gives you the equivalent of free transform. <coughs> what it also does is you've got scale, rotate, skew, distort, perspective, and warp, and flip, so I can flip it. Uh, you can also access this just by right clicking, it's the same menu, which is easier and quicker. So I could flip it vertically, I'm going to undo that, undo is. Command Z, obviously, same as everything else in the world. Um, if I scale this just by clicking on the corner, it'll it won't keep the same proportions. If I hold Shift and do it, it will stay in the same proportions, and it will just scale it proportionally, which is fine. So I'm gonna scale it up somewhere that looks nice. Um, I'll show you perspectives. Uh, which is quite good, I use quite a lot. Perspective is like a better view of skew. So what you can do, you can change things within this perspective. You notice the perspective is changing. So you can change things like that, which is quite good when you need to edit an actual image. But I'm going to undo that. Uh, just zoom back out. Once you're happy with where you've scaled it, you can, you'll notice as I'm moving the mouse around, there's a little uh, curve arrow that means rotate, and then it'll tell you the degrees as you can see. Or you can enter a value up here at the top of the bar. You can, you've got um, size in pixels. You can enter a percentage 
if you click the link button, it will remember, it'll keep the same link between height and width. On clicking, you can do them individually. This is the angle one, so you can change the angle of the rotation, and then you can change the actual value of the the heights and stuff like that. Um, but the purpose of this, that's about right. That's fine. Um, actually, no, it's not. Um, I can't. <laughs> I change that to so. press enter to say yep yeah, I'm happy with that then I'm going to use the press V and I'm going to use the move tool and set it somewhere it's quite nice um, okay now if you're using the latest version of Photoshop as you, you, you can know this is a trial of CC if you press R on your keyboard just R it will come up with this little icon and then that allows you to rotate the page so that when you're um, you're rendering with a, a tablet pen and whatnot this is quite handy because it's the equivalent of turning a piece of paper in reality um, which is quite good if you hold spacebar you get the little hand that's the pan tool but it only seems to work in Photoshop when you've zoomed in when you zoom in so far it'll let you pan when you come out it won't let you pan I, it's something to do with the, the way it sits within this space but it's really irritating because I'm left handed I ideally want this on the left hand side of the screen now but uh, I don't know it's Photoshop for you if you're in Sketchbook Pro you can pan regardless which is nice and I'm guessing it's the same in Painter so I don't know, don't know why Photoshop haven't sorted that out it's irritating but hey if you hold Z um, you get the magnifying you can just zoom in and out by holding left mouse button but I'm just scrolling with mine here. So that's how I generally Z for zoom, R for rotate, spacebar for pan. Uh, also, uh, you can set up guides. So this is the ruler. So if you press Command R, you'll notice the rulers disappear. This is great for measuring things. So I, that's north, and then up here is like 41 centimeters or 42, yeah. And if you let go now, you get a blue line. These are called guides. <coughs> so when you're setting up layouts and presentations and stuff like that, you can use guides and then you can set your text in here. and You know that everything's in the same place at the same time because it's a guide. It's pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. Now to get rid of those, if you press command and colon, There you go, it kind of gets through it for you. Um, what else is there I normally do? To get this grid up, which is quite handy, uh, especially if you're doing package drawings, that's, um, what are they called? I'm just trying to think, what are they called now? The speech double dot things, I can't remember what they're called. That shows how bad my English is. Command and that, which is, you can see views change anyway. It's go down here and it is. Yeah, so there's your guides, and then that's your pixel grid. So turn that on and off. Anyway, feel free to explore in Photoshop. So what I want to do now, I'm happy with the sketch, everything's all set up, it's all nice. I'm going to use pen tool first and I want to path out a certain area. Now the, just is to show you the path, normally I wouldn't start with that but anyway. What you want to do, uh, create a new layer just in case you do end up pressing anything with a brush. Now path, uh, as I'm going to start now. Uh, First of all, I'm going to path out these areas down here in the vents. So I can colour in between the vents and not have to worry. So what you do, picks up point by point, click. Uh, if you click and hold, you can pull these little uh, adjusters out, which you'll, you will end up using to um And what I'm going to do, where there's a, a corner or a radius, I'm going to just put one point either side. And that way. So I'm just going to keep clicking. 
and that will just um, mark out the areas that I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. Um, let me just quickly do this. The more precise you are with these, the better your results will be as well. But let's just mark it out first. Now, at the minute, as you can tell, which you, especially on YouTube, um, you can barely see that path line. But first, I just want to save that path first so I don't erase it or anything. <coughs> so what I could do with now, I'm going to make it go to the pixel grid, but I'm going to go on the, the sketch layer, which is this one. And what I'm going to do, there's a thing called opacity. I'm just going to turn that down so it fades it out so I can still see the sketch but I can see my actual um, path tool. So now I've pathed that all out and it's all com two complete paths. I'm going to use the convert point tool. Now what the, the trick is with this, it's a combination of three tools within the path tool. So if I just click and hold and pull that out, you can see it manipulates the actual path. But once I've let go, if I were to use the convert point tool and do that, I lose curvature between the, that line. So you don't want to do it like that. So the only time I use the convert point tool is when I've got either a sharp corner or just to literally pull these points out so I can actually manipulate the actual curve. Okay, zoom went a bit crazy then. Apologies for that. Um, Oh, why is it not letting me pan? It's, it's so frustrating in Photoshop. It's... Pan. <laughs> it's not letting me pan for some bizarre reason. Photoshop is an amazing tool, but at the same time, it's the bane of my life. So I want a, a quite sharp corner in there, and I want a corner in there, so I'm going to leave those as they are. Right, it's decided it wants to pan now. Again, I'm just going to literally just pull these out because I'll adjust these with the third tool that I'll use. So just keep keep pulling these out. And. I'm not going to worry too much about the accuracy because otherwise I'd be here all day. So, yeah, I'm happy with that one for now, just to show you this. Uh, oh, so rough. If you click on a point that's already been done, just once it will go back to its default, the way it was set up, which is quite handy. If you make a mistake, you can just click and it'll go back and do it again. <coughs> okay, so that has been blocked in. Now what I want to use is the direct selection tool, which is A on the keyboard. But if you also press Command, well, if you hold command and then left mouse click, it goes to the selection tool. If you hold command again and press left click, it'll go to direct selection tool. Now the difference between the two are the most difference white and black arrow. The white arrow, when you select on a part of the path, you'll notice the the whole path is selected, but you'll notice only certain areas have been used. But the direct selection tool allows you to manipulate a curve whilst maintaining curvature throughout these points. So unlike the, the convert point tool, it doesn't. So that's the difference. So for when I want to refine the path around my sketch, 
I'll use these and no matter what I do to whatever side it will always be in curvature so that is uh, quite important and then it just it's easy to you can move the points around you can change how they come out and manipulate the curve and really refine the actual curve itself so that is the process of setting up a nice path and I'll just quickly do the other one so yeah I'm on the selection tool Really tighten the radius up on that, uh, and that looks pretty good to be fair. I mean, for the for sake of showing you guys, I'm not going to spend ages doing that. And the idea is, you'd puff out all your windows, you'd puff out all your air vents and your your back and your bodywork, and then you'd puff out your bright lights and your details and whatnot. <coughs> if you wish to do it freehand, by all means, try do it freehand. Because, um, but anyway, so now they'll appear in path one. Um, now, what I can do with the selection tool, with the black arrow, if I press that one and I press shift and then left mouse, okay, so that's pick the first one, hold shift, pick the second one. I can then Str these are what we've got here fill which will just fill it with a colour based on whatever you've got colour wise in here then you've got the path tool uh, not the path tool sorry um, let me just undo that stroke which it will stroke a line all the way around based on your brush so if I do say 34, 30 pixels which is yay wide, it will stroke a 30 pixel line all the way around. But you'll notice if you've got a soft or a hard, it will do a soft or a hard line. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you use the dotted line icon, you notice it, it all goes dotted, and then what you can do, because I only had that one path, I can either draw inside or outside that um, area same way as we did before so if I want to um, invert that and I want to draw on the outside press inverse or use the hotkey so I'll use say um, a colour, I'll grab a colour from down here but I'll explain this in a minute actually because this is my personal setup uh, make sure you're on a, an empty layer and then you can see the effect that it has um, that was a, a hard brush but this is where the brush settings come into it that was hard 100% and quite a large brush and also the opacity was 100% on the brush and the flow was 100% on the brush now if I change that down to 50% opacity you'll notice it's transparent and it builds up in layers before it gets to 100% which can take quite a few if I change the flow down to say 55% the flow basically means when you do a line it's uh, either consist a consistent uh, colour is 100% flow when you do 50% you can see it breaks it down into a series of circles that are spaced apart if I decrease that even further you'll notice the circles get larger distance um, so that's the, the basics of that I'll show you how you get a soft so with the opacity it doesn't matter what the opacity is if you do a low flow and put the hardness down to zero even on a hard brush you can get an airbrushed effect 
So if I change the hardness back up to 100%, put the flow back up to 100%, it's hard. I haven't changed the brush, that's the same brush. Okay. I'm just going to undo all that. Um, same principles as a brush with the eraser. So if you press E on the keyboard, um, E for the eraser. Same principles, opacity and flow to get a hard or a soft edge. So if I want to have quite a large brush uh, for the eraser, sorry, and then I want to erase that, I can get a nice gradient freehand with a Wacom or whatever. Obviously, well, this is a mouse again. <laughs> so that's how you kind of go about doing that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a new layer with a soft paintbrush. Uh, this is called swatches down here. And if you go to window, uh, you see I've got swatches open. So if if I if you ever lose anything by a mistake, go to window, and you'll find it in here. Now my swatches originally started up here, but I literally I, I just dragged it out, and then I I literally just dragged it down here and stretched it out. You can always redock them; it doesn't matter. It's so flexible. The one good thing about Photoshop. And then what I did. Uh, on this little button here, I put large thumbnails because originally they're small, which is no good. And these are default. This is why it comes set up. If you, this is really handy for when you're doing a series of renderings, and when you're doing the same color scheme for that series of renderings, it's always really good to um, pick a color that you want to do, for example or a range of colours and you'll notice a button that says add to swatches so if I add to swatches uh, you can name it a colour if you really want you'll notice it appears in this box here so if I'm doing a rendering and I've gone oh I need to do a black and then you're oh what oh, I forgot where that particular colour was because I had one that was say here um, it, it can it becomes a pain and especially when you've got to do three or four different views of the same card and the same colour or the same product or whatever. So I use swatches all the time. You can do the colour picker, but you'll never quite end up with the right colour because if it's but if it's got other layers on top of it or if it's got um, transparency on it, you'll never pick up the exact same colour. So that's what I use swatches for. I use them all down here so I've got all my colours and it just makes life easier for when you're doing your next rendering. And you'll know you've got, if you're working in a team, you'll know that everyone's working in the same colours because you can pick up their colours from their file and then set it set it as a swatch and that's it and you haven't got to worry about it. Um, so that explains swatches and that explains these colours down here. Yeah. I'm just going to do a blue. I'm going to make a large brush and then I'm going to do... Oh yeah, um, you can change the size of your brush by a uh, open bracket or close bracket or a parentheses. So up and down, rather than going up here, or you can right click in there. Where else you're on the brush tool or the eraser tool. So I'm just going to do a nice soft area and go on the path that I made earlier. I'm going to select that path. And then, because that's selected that, by default it always selects the inside of the path. So, whilst make sure you're not selected on the actual path. So you unselect the actual path, go back to your layers. Now on that layer, press delete, and then it's deleted that area. Now if I do a new layer, and I select the path, again, make the selection, and make sure I'm not on that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a black on a new layer, and I'm just going to paint in down there. And then you can see it starts to come to life. And then what I'm going to do, just to show you the um, the next step of a rendering, if I do. So I want a nice crease on this shoulder here, and what I'll do, I'll path out a certain area, 
and I'll go around the edge of the actual window as well. So I use a pen tool. I'm going to use a convert point tool to bring out all the points. And then once I've done that, you want to spend as much time as possible on these to get your, your lines right over your design because every pixel counts and it does make a difference as to the design of the car blah 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 but for the sake of showing you the tools I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to quickly select the selection arrow <coughs> So they're about right. Right, I'll do. I was a beer all day. Okay, so I've just created a new path, and you'll notice it, I was still selected on the other paths because you can see I've still got these paths. They're all on the same layer. Um, so don't have to worry about saving that path. So just that one path selected, I'm going to select that so it goes into selection mode. And you could either do a new layer, and I'll put this back up to one hundred percent. So I've got a new layer on top of on top of the actual blue. I'm going to use the same color blue, and I'm just going to brush that in slightly. So if I hide the, the base layer, then what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit the eraser. And I'm just going to soften up that edge there and there. And right, so now you can't really see that there because I've used the same colour, but it's on top of it. So you can't really see it. If you zoom in, you can a bit, but you can't really see it. So um, that's where these layers come in. Uh, on the top of your layers menu, you've got something that says normal. These are your, um, oh, I can't remember the virtual word. Mine's gone blank. Anyway, you're, you've probably heard of them. They're called composition layers, I think they're called, or composition seconds. Anyway, multiply. What will that do? That will, it will pick up whatever's below it and it will make it darker. Um, but if you use a white, for example, so if I just duplicate that layer now, yeah, um, I'll just quickly make that white. Now, if I put that onto normal as a white layer, you'll see it's white. But if I click on multiply, like I did with the blue, it, it's disappeared. Because multiply, anything that white becomes transparent. Anything that's coloured becomes darker, and black just stays black. Um, the opposite to this is, I believe, is screen. It will just become whiter. So if I do the same thing with the blue, that's on multiply. If I put it on screen, it becomes lighter based on what's below it or behind it. Um, uh, if I were to do, say, colour dodge, slightly different, um, linear. So you can cycle through these to get a certain effect based on what you want to do. If I was to do the white one and play around with these, I'm going to say I'll put that on overlay. It'll pick up, the. it'll keep the white, but it'll pick up the colour behind it and light, lighten it on overlay. Hard light, soft light. So there's various composition settings you can do. <coughs> Feel free to play around with them and just don't be afraid of clicking on them because you can always go back to normal. Doesn't matter. Um, so we'll keep with the white one. And what I'm going to do now is show you the burn tool. Actually, we'll go to the, the actual blue one. 
to show the burnt all better. I'm going to put that on multiply. And then if I use the burn tool, um, where the bodywork dips down on the other side, if I use the burn tool, you'll notice it gets darker and darker. You, yeah, you start to see that building up now. So you, just by, you can start to, to show a bit of form with the burn tool. But once you've done the burn tool, unless you've got loads of command undos, uh, yeah, undos. Unless you keep doing a lot of undos, you might not be able to get that back. So you might always create a duplicate of that layer if you're not used to it. So otherwise you'll have to do it all over again. Now the dodge tool, I want to say I want to show highlights on the C pillar. So I'm going to use the dodge tool and it will lighten that up. Again, you can do midtones and shot up. This is where all your options are. So I'm going to select highlights, see what that does. That's just going to basically make that lighter. Um, so you can build up tone and that with the dodge and burn tool. Um, if I was to do it on the white one, I could then do burn not a lot's happening there so I'll try shows not a lot's happening there either why not right, that's working now so you can see what it's happening the effect is happening with the dodge and burn tool failing that if you don't want to do that go back to your path Select your path. Now I could do on a new layer. I'll do that that way and then the other way on another layer. Then put that below that layer. Now it's an ongoing process of building that up and using the paths to, to get nice, crisp, clean lines. I could use the edge of that path to then do the windscreen, or the daylight opening. And then I'll get a hard eraser and I'll just erase all this that I don't want. And by using the layers, you can keep what's below and what's not below. And obviously, you path all that out so it's nice and clean. I'll just do it now. So you puff out the roof of your car. Obviously, that's all wonky. It's all gone to pop. Um, yeah, so that's the general tools that you'll use. Um, and you'll use uh, airbrush and stuff like that. And that's the way you build up all your, your rendering, basically. And it's just a case of being an artist then. Um, like, if I were to just quickly airbrush freehand with a mouse uh, a load of white on a new layer that's really harsh so you start to see the effects uh, if I select this path and this path 
I do inverse and paint on the outside of those. And then on a new layer. This is where you end up with a lot of layers because you just you just go with the process. It's the same as if you were going to render with markers, pastels and pen. Um, it just makes it easy digitally. And I'll turn that layer off. So you can start to see what's happening here. And then on a new layer again, I'm going to use a red. Pull that on the top layer. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the eraser quite soft and then just raise it back. This is free and a little bit with the back on. Okay, and if I get a dodge tool now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate that layer and then I'm going to dodge that whole layer. So I'm going to put highlights and quite a high exposure. Maybe not. I'll try. Don't want to protect the tones. So it'll change the tone of the colour. Maybe it won't. There we go. Why it works out that I want to be in shadows and not highlights is beyond me. That's Photoshop for you. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to scale that by Command T. And then quickly there's there we are and then say if I'm on top of that I want to do a path I'm gonna get a brush and then I'm gonna set it down to three pixels and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select a white and on a new layer and then gonna stroke those paths and then what I'm going to do I'm going to get the eraser nice and big nice and soft and I'm just going to knock off all the edges See how this is what starts to build up now. And then what you could do, press V on your keyboard, hold Alt and on that layer, just move the mouse whilst holding Alt, and you'll notice it's made a copy. If I press Command I, it will change white to black because I've done what is called inverse. So then I can just move that down or up and it gives you like an edge. Obviously I didn't want to do it on everything so I don't want to do it here for example because that's just a crease. <laughs> but for things like shut lines, a, a white line and a black line together, it's quite good. Um, just arrays or whatever whatever you're trying to achieve really <coughs> yeah and you, you get the idea or oh, quickly I'll just block in a wheel show you your lips tool so your lips tool I'm gonna to set it on path so I'll come up on a new new path um, I'm just gonna save that so with the ellipse tool uh, which is also the whole tool is you on the keyboard, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do an ellipse, but I'm gonna do a dead straight down vertical ellipse, um, and then I'll transform it. So then, with that, it's then created. I want to ignore the options in this because I want to do an ellipse. I'm gonna save that path. 
so it doesn't get deleted. Now hold, uh, what I want to do now, go on the selection tool, which is A. Select, Command T, brings up free transform on that path. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate that. And I'm going to use these points as my reference. So this is 90 degrees to the axle. If you're taught ellipses, ellipses are always 90 degrees to their axle in any aspect. So the axle line is going to be going through the car, center of the wheel. So what I'll do is, based on the perspective, get these two lines in my reference to go in the right direction. And then I want to just scale accordingly until it looks right. Uh, which is about there will do. It will say, yeah, that's fine. Then what I want to do, I'm going to duplicate that again. So I'm going to hold Alt whilst I'm the same selection tool. Command T. Scale that up. And I'm going to select the first one. And I'm going to, on the, the original blue layer, you see my, my spokes are there. On that blue layer, I'm going to put a layer mask on that. So this tool down here. Uh, because I had a path selected, it's done that. Uh, I don't want that area to be blue, I want that to be gone. So on the layer mask, you see it's gone black and white, the white bit being the ellipse. Whilst on that selection there, see that's unselected, that's selected the mask. So press Command I, and it'll flip the mask to black and white the other way around. So that reveals, so if I press shift on that, no, the actual rendering, the actual paint is still there, but the mask hides and shows what you want to show. This is what masks are absolutely amazing. Uh, then on a new layer, I'm going to get that second ellipse I did. Select that ellipse. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that blue. Um, I can't remember where that blue is because I haven't saved it. Um, I'm just going to select. On a new layer above that base layer, I'm going to get a brush and then with a blue. So this is where it would have been good on the swatches to remember which one I had. <laughs> but hey, I've just done the, the selection pipette thing. Now all I'm doing here is... Gonna paint in that there. You'll see why in a minute. I'm gonna go back to my paths first. Go back to the ellipse path, which is path three. I'm gonna select this path, and then I'm gonna make it selected. And I'm gonna press delete whilst I'm on that layer I've just done, which is layer fifteen. Now what I'm gonna do is there's this white highlight is coming past the part where I want that. So I'm going to find that white highlight. That one there. Now with the largest one, I'm going to select. And on that layer, I'm just going to delete the white. Now we go back down to layer 15, which is that, which you can't really see in a minute. I'm going to put that on multiply. That's what I painted in. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the eraser. And I'm just going to softly erase that. So it's a nice graded. And that is a process of doing a car render in Photoshop. With a general overview of the Photoshop files. Hope that helps. Uh, any questions pop in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. Cheers.